academically ignored work. Churchward told us that Easter Island marked the southern boundary of ancient Lemuria. Is there a way we can demonstrate this? Sure, several. If you happen to have a globe of the earth handy, draw a straight line over it from Giza, the grid central of remote antiquity, all the way westward to Easter Island. This line will, of course, cross South America, specifically across those mysterious plains of Nazca in Peru, and all of its lines and designs which no one has yet been able to figure out. One of the more interesting displays at Nazca is this one, the so-called Great Triangle. Now notice those several parallel lines that flow eastward from its west side. Why do they all point over toward Giza in Egypt? Let's take a closer look at the Great Triangle, shall we? The lines and designs at Nazca were made by two methods. Some were grooves cut into the pampa, while others were laid out by placing stones in rows. The Great Triangle is among the largest geometrics at Nazca. What makes the Great Triangle so unique there are those several parallel lines which point over toward Giza. What's the message here? No one has been able to figure it out. Despite an endless line of top mathematicians, archaeologists, and archaeoastronomers, their best theories fail. But suppose I told you that any eighth grader worth a C minus can read the message here if he or she simply concentrates. See it? It's all the lines, isn't it? by trying to find a single tree in a forest. Okay, let's dispose of all the lines outside the triangle, except for the two which interrupt all the parallel lines. There, that's better. We cut out the rest of the forest. Now the numbers are evident. Eight parallel lines to the west side. Of these eight parallels, only two were allowed to continue eastward, where they meet five parallels. Eight, five, and two, inside the triangle, where they are divided. The instruction, then, is to divide. 8 divided by 5 divided by 2 is 0 0.8. Hold that fractional number in your memory briefly. 0 0.8. True of any triangle is the fact that it features 180 degrees of corner angles, an average of 60 degrees each. But look again closely. Notice that this Nazca Triangle is actually two, one within another. What are two 180-degree triangles? 360 degrees, of course. So why didn't they simply show us a 360-degree circle instead of a triangle? There was a very logical reason for that, as we will understand a bit later. back into your memory now and retrieve that 0 0.8 we were just talking about. Then multiply it by the 360 degrees of form, which gave us those numbers 8, 5, and 2. 0 0.8 multiplied by 360 degrees becomes 288. Now the 60 degree corners in the triangle. 288 times 60. 17,280. 
17,280 encodes the actual latitude of the Great Triangle. 14 degrees, 41 minutes, and 30.104 seconds south latitude. To find the Great Triangle's longitude to the west of the Great Pyramid at Giza, well, the triangle has three corners, doesn't it? Multiply its grid latitude of 17,280 by 3 and voila, 51,840, which encodes 106 degrees, 15 minutes, 32.6 seconds, right through the center of the triangle. Which means, of course, that the grid point of Nazca's Great Triangle is 3, like its three corners declare. And that's why they had to show us two triangles rather than a circle. See? Eighth grader material. Very simple. Nazca, then, was not the ancient astronaut spaceport that Van Daniken thought it was. Nor do its many intersecting lines point to this or that star, as archaeoastronomers thought. Nor are they pathways for superstitious Indians to follow in order to avoid contact with evil spirits. Nazca is the Rosetta Stone of the Pyramid Matrix System, and it speaks not to the stars, but to our own terrestrial ancient history, Earth history. But don't just take my word for this. Ask the man. He's there at Nazca, too. His name is Manos. And he shows us numbers very carefully, very clearly. But he has no face, hence no eyes, nose, or mouth to count. All he shows are his nine fingers, four in one hand and five in the other. And notice that right angle where his head meets his shoulder, a 90-degree right angle. Some can do this in their heads. 90 degrees times 9 times 4 times 5 equals 16,200, the figure which encodes Manos's latitude south of our equator. As for his West Giza longitude, well, that's why he shows us his two ears and two arms, four. Multiply his grid latitude 16,200 by 4, and you can have his grid longitude. 64,800, itself encoding 106 degrees, 14 minutes, 43.6 seconds, which is exactly where Mr. Mano stands upon the earth. Another of Nazca's curious glyphs is the so-called spiral. This spiral rests on top of a great needle. The bottom of this needle reaches the great rectangle. Rectangle on one end and a spiral on the other, both being obviously connected. What is mathematically true of any rectangle? Their corner angles will always total 360 degrees. Our first number then is 360. Next we go up to the spiral on top of the needle. We should enlarge this to have a better look at it. Notice that the spiral is an enigma to the eye, part spiral and partly separate arcs. I should point out here that most references on Nazca will show this spiral as a true spiral. Why they do so, I can't imagine. But what you see here comes from the top. A topographical map drawn up by the Instituto Geográfico Nacional in Lima, Peru, dated 17 June 1993. As most of you know, I work only from the best data sources. Here we see that our spiral enigma shows two separate, incomplete arcs on its outside. In all, four arcs terminating abruptly at the top, and two others vectoring on top of the needle. The formula can be completed in the mind. 360 degrees times 4 times 2, 2,880. Encoded behind this large rational is the actual soft latitude of the spiral, 
14 degrees, 40 minutes, and 05.14 seconds. Nazca, the place of the lines and designs. That one place on the earth deemed most suitable for a blackboard capable of getting a written message through time itself. No wind, no rain, no snow, no erosion, and a place so hostile even to vegetation that weeds won't grow. Write something here and it will still be here a thousand years from now. To read the message of that at Nazca, one has to pay close attention, as Manos in the Great Triangle explained. Every detail must be digested. Bold generalities will get you nowhere. <laughs>